It's time now for a look at the latest in local news. In the news, Vernon Jones, a Republican candidate for governor, brought his campaign to Jessup this past Monday afternoon with a meet and greet at Damon's Restaurant. WIFOFM had a chance to talk with him. He insisted that the candidates on the Republican ballot, he says he's the only candidate that can beat Stacey Abrams in November. I haven't seen in a while, uh, ever since David Perdue jumped in his race, they kind of knocked off the front page. Yeah, well, see, that was intentional, especially liberal media. They know that I'm the only one that can defeat Stacey Abrams, or so you know, and I know, um, no disrespect to David Perdue, but where's he been for the past year? He hasn't been fighting for election integrity. He hasn't been around pushing for constitutional carry, banning CRT. So, uh, to show up now, that's fine. The bottom line, though, is he had two bikes at the peak. Spent $97 million and couldn't beat a no nine. And does he really think he can beat Stacey Abrams? So uh, I think it's pretty obvious. Um, the media's treated me like, I guess, like they treated President Trump when they said that he didn't have a chance to run for president. That, you know, all the way down to election night, no path to sit, no path to the, to, to the White, White House. Uh, but we have a path uh, to the governor's mansion, and we're going to win this, this election. Uh, just a matter of letting things play out. Why are you convinced you're the only person to beat Stacey Abrams? Well, for one, I have more experience as chief executive than all of them. For two, I have more legislative experience. And for three, they can't play that card with me. As I said earlier, whether it's an ace of spades or ace of hearts, they can't play that card with me. She cannot say or get me to co or convince me or anybody else that I've been suppressed or black people been suppressed because they can't afford a free photo ID. So she can't play that card here. We're going straight in. You said you're excited about the debates. When will they start? I hope they start tomorrow. <laughs> um, you know, I, we're, we're mindful of what the liberal media wants to do. They want to try to wipe me out of this race. They don't want me in the debate. They're going to try to, to keep me out of this debate. Uh, but we're not, matter of fact, I, I, me being in there make up the debate. Um, but I hope it starts real soon. I know we're in session, starts, it started today. I hope we can have some clearly early on number of debates around this state. I hope we have one right here in Jessup. Um, because people need to hear from all of us. Put us on the stage and, and let us uh, uh, be accountable with our answers. And so I'm looking forward to that debate. I want the debate. Any concern the Republican Party's playing right into Stacey Abrams' hands, continue to divide, divide, and I've got three people in the race on the Republican side? Well, let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with a good-spirited uh, debate within the party. The fact of it is, after the fact, you know, we come together. Um, but what I see happening here is the establishment. The establishment, they want Kemp. Um, the establishment, they're the ones who really had Kemp caving into Stacey Abrams. That's why he won't come out and call for an audit. Uh, he won't come out and ban these companies who are terminating uh, workers uh, because they won't take the vaccination. They shouldn't have to. They have medical freedoms. And so um, where we see it is um, whether the, the party has several candidates or not, we're just carrying a message that we believe that's resonating in Georgia. I know it's resonating in Georgia, especially my message, because Kemp is following me now on Constitution Carry, where he's been hiding behind a tree. Nothing on Constitution Carry. He saw David Perdue come out. All of a sudden, he wants to push for election integrity. Where, where has he been for election integrity? He was a candidate. His election was affected by it, but where was he? And certainly now, he wants to follow me again on, um, on eliminating state income taxes. Well, where has he been? And so, obviously, my message is winning. They want to take a lead from me, and that's shows you that I am the only candidate that can hold a line with Republicans, keep them excited, motivated, and enthusi enthusi enthusiastically get them to come out to the polls. But at the same time, I'm the only one that can eat over uh, out of the trough on the Democrat votes and steal a lot of those conservatives, Democrats, who are looking for a Republican like me to vote for. So that puts me ahead of the game. Okay. Always good to see you. Hopefully we'll get you in the studio soon or get you back on the show, but always good to see you. I'd love to come back. I'd love to come in the studio. Uh, and your, your folks, your listeners can always reach out to me at jonesforgeorgia.com and learn about our campaign, our movement, our contract with Georgia to ban CRT, uh, to ban uh, employers from firing and terminating people based on, on not taking the vaccination, eliminating state income taxes, making sure everyone in our classrooms now, uh, that every child stands up and start their morning out with saying, a pledge allegiance to the flag. We need to embrace our flag, but also banning uh, bio transgender males from participating in female sports uh, and making sure that children aren't subjected 
to transgen operations and hormone injections. Those things are important, and I'm, I'm willing to fight for those things. And I'm not trying to. I'm not worried about being politically correct. Uh, the bottom line: if we don't, Stacey Abrams is going to take down our monuments and everything else. We'll be a socialist state, and I'm the only one that can defend or defeat, I should say, Stacey Abrams. And once again, those comments of Mr. Vernon Jones in town Monday for meeting greeted at the Damon's Famous Wings Restaurant. Again, he's on the Republican ballot for governor in the state of Georgia, trying to defeat both the incumbent Governor Brian Kemp and David Perdue, all three men seeking that Republican nomination, running against Stacey Abrams in November. We'll be back with more news after this word from our sponsor, other commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Qualifying ends today at 12 noon for two special elections to be held here in Wayne County in the month of March. District 5 on the County Commissioner's Board. That seat's been vacant since Ralph Hickox resigned to run for Mayor of Jessup. His wife, Jamie Hickox, so far the only candidate in the race. Odom has a vacant City Council seat. As of today, no one's signed up to run for that position. If no one signs up, we'll get with probate Judge Tammy Thornton to see what happens then. Election set for March 15th. The person who runs and wins. The county seat in District 5 will run for re-election in November. As seats 1, 3, and 5 are on the ballot in Wayne County this November on the County Council. Seat 1 or District 1 held by Chairman Herschel Harris. Seat 3 or District 3 held by Commissioner Mike Roberts. District 5, again, vacant since Ralph Hickox resigned. Once again, day, 12 noon, the deadline to register to run for one of those two spots. We conclude with our interviews from last Friday's Eggs and Issues Breakfast, hosted by Wayne County's Chamber of Commerce. Today, we're here from State Representative Bill Workheiser. Representative Bill Warkaiser, uh, I'm sure we're going to have you at Wednesdays with Warkaiser probably next week. But again, uh, your thoughts on the legislative session? What do you think we should look at? Uh, well, the hot topics are going to be uh, mental health, uh, public safety, um, and most people are thinking downtown Atlanta, which is certainly the focus. But um, it's really an issue everywhere. I don't, I don't know if it's related to COVID or whatever, but the crime has been going up. But uh, Steve, well, no, I serve on public safety, um, and so I, throughout this period, we, we heard from a lot of officials in in city of Atlanta and some of the ridiculous stuff that's going on with bail reform and all, so we've got to address that. Um, the budget, all of us, all three of us are on some type of appropriations, so uh, so starting next week, uh, the very first day, we'll start having appropriations meeting. Um, I think we're going to take the second day off to watch a football game. Uh, we're going to gavel in and then leave, um, and then... But those are, those are the big areas, um, education, mental health, public safety, I think. A lot of people uh, I saw where the House Speaker David Rawson says the gambling issue may finally come to a vote in the state of Georgia. Is that a possibility? You know, that's funny because he is so adamant against it. Um, I, I think what he's saying is he's open to letting the people decide. That doesn't necessarily mean that he's for it. Um, and that's a tough for us down here in the Bible Belt. Um, it is one of the things that I hear from constituents about that they don't want. Um, and, and one of the reasons we del have delayed on that, because I think the fear is um, the people who are vocal against it, you'll hear from. But we're pretty sure once that curtain's pulled, it's going to pass. And so, um, and you know, there's the argument for, well, people are going to Alabama, Tennessee, uh, North Carolina to gamble, and we're losing all that, you know, money. The arguments against are the vices that come with it, um, and it's not a good picture. It's it's a tax on those who are can least afford it. And so um, I'm not a big fan of it, but, you know, they, it's a tough call because it – we're not sent up there necessarily to, you know, to push our personal beliefs, but to let, um, if we're representing and, and the people want to be able to vote on it. Um, so I'd, I'd love to hear from people, see what, you, see what your thoughts are. Okay, Bill, always good to see you. Safe travels to Atlanta. Thank you very much. And once again, Bill's in Atlanta, but we'll hear from him today on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show on Wednesdays with Warkheiser. We'll come back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor, other commercial messages, so please stay tuned. Final notes and news, the Wayne County Board of Education to work session yesterday afternoon. We'll have a full report for you that tomorrow on the local news. Do have the personnel. 
Certified Recommendations, Rachel Benjamin, Arthur Williams Middle School, Lisa Kickletter, Jessup Elementary, Maddox Lamb, James E. Bacon, Anthony Mobley, Odom Elementary, Kimberly Tayo, Wayne County High School. Certified Resignations, Kristen Kennedy, James E. Bacon, Connie Grounds, Wayne County High School. Classified Recommendations, Perlene Jeriel, James E. Bacon. Classified Resignations, Quentin Dixby, Wayne County High School, and Anthony Mobley, Odom Elementary. Wayne County Historical Society meets tomorrow at Afternoon at the Western Sizzling Steakhouse, guest speaker for the evening will be Mickey Dill Thompson, chair of the J.C. Landing Authority, who will discuss plans for a nature and history center at the landing. Dutch Street Meal precedes the meeting at 6.15. Program tomorrow begins at 7. Dues for the 2022 membership are now due. $20 for individuals, $30 for families, and $50 for businesses, corporate memberships. Memberships are encouraged. Members are encouraged to attend and new members are welcome. And finally, in the news, the Wayne County Republican Party will be holding its first quarterly night meeting on January 27th at 6 p.m. at Captain Joe's Dutch Street. Anyone interested in participating with the Republican Party, please attend. Precinct responsibilities will be discussed. They should please come and bring a friend. If you need more information, contact GOP of Wayne County at gmail.com. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports coming your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan, save a great day.